is since the very first time that you uttered those words, that you humbled yourself before God, said, God, this is a God-sized situation. I can't fix this. I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. From the very first time that you lifted up that simple prayer to God, he heard your cry. From that very moment that the, the words went out of your mouth and up towards heaven, from that very moment, he heard your cry. From the first time you cried out for healing, God heard that prayer. From the first time you prayed for that wayward child, God heard your prayer. From the, from the first time you prayed for your marriage to be restored and to be made whole, God heard that, that prayer. From the first time you prayed, prayed for a breakthrough regarding depression or your finances or that relational mess that you've gotten yourself into, God heard that prayer. For the first time that you cried out for, for God to bring about healing in, in, our, in our nation, in our world, God heard that prayer. From the first time you prayed, our good...
Good evening and welcome to Harvester Online. I'm Pastor Jen and I'll be with you all night tonight. And tonight we're going to have a sermon that's a little bit different than a lot of the the Daniel sermons that we've been hearing. You know, with the Daniel sermons, we've probably heard most of those stories before. But this story, it's one that you may have heard. I, I kind of knew that there was a story about this somewhere in the Bible. I never put it with Daniel until this week when, when I heard it. And it's really a good story if you're wondering about prayer and wondering if prayer is something that's that's worth our time. You know, a lot of times I think we think that that prayer doesn't work because we don't see things happening the way that we expect them to. But this is a sermon where you're going to find out that there's more going on in the spiritual realm than what we know about. And and so it's going to be a, a big encouragement to you, I think. So we're going to go pass it on to Pastor Jason, and after that, we'll be here to finish up. From Daniel 10, 1 through 19. In the third year of the reign of the King Cyrus of Persia, Daniel, also known as Belshazzar, had another vision. He understood that the vision concerned events certain to happen in the future, times of war and great hardship. When this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. All that time I had eaten no rich food, no meat or wine crossed my lips, and I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. On April 23rd, as I was standing on the bank of the great Tigris River, I looked up and saw a man dressed in linen clothing with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His face flashed like lightning and his eyes flamed like torches. His arms and feet shone like polished bronze, and his voice roared like the vast multitude of people. Only I, Daniel, saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing, but they were suddenly terrified and ran away to hide. So I was left there all alone to see this amazing vision. My strength left me. My face grew deathly pale, and I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak. And when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted and lay there with my face to the ground. Just then, he, a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling, to my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God, so listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up, still trembling. Then he said, Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer, but for 21 days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the arch archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was speaking to me, I looked down at the ground, unable to say a word. Then the one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing in front of me, I am filled with anguish because of the vision I have seen, my Lord, and I am very weak. How can someone like me, your servant, talk to you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Then the one who looked like a man touched me again, and I felt my strength returning. Don't be afraid, he said, for you are very precious to God. Peace. Be encouraged. Be strong. As he spoke these words to me, I suddenly felt stronger and said to him, Please speak to me, my Lord, for you have strengthened me. This is the word of the Lord. Be you may be seated. Thank you, Amy. Well, today, um, as we wrap up this series on Daniel, I believe that God is going to speak to those of you who have been praying and praying and praying and praying for something for a very long time, and yet you've not yet seen the answer to your prayers, and you're maybe wondering if you should give up praying, or maybe you even have given up praying. I believe God is going to speak very, very deeply to you today. 
In fact, I know so many people who have been praying for miracles in your life, all kinds of miracles. Some have been praying for kids uh, to come back to faith because maybe they have wandered away from the, the faith and today your heart, your mind, your spirit is broken at where they are currently at in their life. They're running fast in the wrong direction and so you've been praying for them. Others of you, you've been praying for some kind of spiritual breakthrough, like maybe to overcome depression, or maybe to overcome some type of financial situation that looks very, very bleak today, or maybe some kind of breakthrough in a relationship that was maybe at one time very, very strong, and then something was happened, some word was said, something took place, and that, that relationship has been strained or has fallen apart since that time, and you've been praying. Maybe you said something that was misinterpreted or misheard, or maybe you didn't mean and you said it, and, and that relationship's been a, a mess since that time, and you've been praying for it to be restored, and it's not yet been restored, though maybe it's been even decades since that happened. Still others are praying for maybe a, a physical miracle, because maybe the lab results came back bad. You went in, they drew blood, and... It didn't look good, and they did more labs and more labs and more labs, and each time the news has come back and it's not been in your favor. Or, or maybe it's come back bad for someone that you care very deeply for, and you're watching them, and you're watching their health deteriorate, and you've been praying and praying and praying for a miracle. Maybe today you're tempted just to stop praying. Whatever it is that you've been praying for, maybe for a long, long time, maybe you've been praying for decades, and, and you haven't seen results for that thing yet, I believe that God is going to minister to you today in a very, very special way if you allow him to speak to you and into those concerns that weigh heavily upon your heart today. Now, before we dive more fully into the context of this passage that was just read, uh, let's, let's kind of look more at the context. Because last week we, we looked in Daniel chapter 6, and we learned that in the story of Daniel in the lion's den, that he was not a young man anymore, like, not the, like the flannel graphs that oftentimes we see where he's very nice and young, and he's surrounded by sweet little kittens that are called lions. They look very snugly, and, and on those flannel graphs from our childhood, it looks like a very, very cute story. We learned that, no, those were for ferocious beast, and at this point in Daniel's life story, in Daniel chapter 6, how old was he, do you remember? 80 years of age, right? He's a, he's a, a, a very much older man now, and so he's been walking with God for a long, long time, right? So here in chapter 10, we're, we're four chapters further along in his journey. Here in chapter 10, he is now even older, right? You don't get younger, it just keeps progressing in age, right? So, so he, at this point in his life story, he is now almost 90 years of age. And so for decades, Daniel has been standing firm in the faith. Decade after decade after decade. And as he has been standing firm in the faith, and as he has been praying, and as he has been believing God to do miracles, he has seen God do some amazing miracles. He's seen the, the fiery furnace. He's seen the Daniels in the, the he's been in the lion's den. Uh, he's, he's seen all kinds of amazing miracles. But there is one prayer that Daniel has been praying literally now for decades and decades and decades and decades and decades, and he has not seen an answer to that prayer that weighed so heavily upon his heart. In fact, if you were here in week one of this series, we learned that, that when he was a very young man, that, that the evil king Nebuchadnezzar, he came down with his armies into Israel and wiped out the people and did horrendous things and then destroyed the temple and then hauled off some of those young men, including himself, off into captivity and made them into his household slaves. He took the, 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 the best, the, the brightest young men and, and, and did so to kind of crush them and to crush their future. And so as a result of that experience that happened literally decades and decades and decades ago, Daniel has now been for praying for all these years, possibly 70 years or maybe 75 years or more at this point. He has been praying that, that God would restore the temple in Jerusalem, that, that they would be released to go back home, that they would be allowed to go and to worship freely. He's been praying. It's been weighing so heavily upon his heart. But though he's been praying and praying and praying for about 75 years, at this point he has still seen no answer to a daily prayer request that he probably prayed at least three times a day for 75 years. Praying and praying, but it doesn't seem like things are happening. Finally, after all these years, 
Here, when he's almost 90 years of age, there is a small glimmer of hope. There's a, there's a new king that we learned about in chapter 6, and, and Cyrus is a little bit more you know, gracious, and, and it looks like things are about to maybe, just maybe, get, get better. So there's like this little glimmer of hope that, that maybe, maybe things are going to be better, and just when it, it seems like maybe we're turning a corner, and maybe things are going to be going in a, in a positive direction, that maybe it will be an answer to this, this decades-long prayer, all of a sudden, here in chapter 10, Daniel receives a vision that was very, very heartbreaking, crushing, and disturbing. Instead of a vision of dancing and parties and, and being back home and everything being just as it's supposed to be, instead, here in chapter 10, he receives a vision from God of more war and hardships. And he's like, dude, God, like, really? Really? I've been faithful year after year, decade after decade. I've seen you do so many miracles. I've seen you do miracles for me and miracles for others. And there's been one need weighing heavily upon my heart for this whole time, for 75 years. And I've been praying three times a day. And I, I thought that finally we're going to see a, a change in direction and things are going to get better. And then just when I, I, I get this glimmer of hope that finally things are going to be like they're supposed to be and like they were, things are going to be restored to me the, in, in the ways that I've been longing for, this is the vision that I get, more war, more hardship. And so Daniel was zapped of all of his strength. He's crushed by the weight of this. And I guess the question I want to ask here is, can you relate? Has there ever been a time in your life, or maybe right now, a moment in your life, you're there where you've been praying for something for so long, Believing and trusting and going to God repeatedly in prayer, day after day, month after year, uh, month, year after year, decade after decade, and it, and it just and it, nothing seems to be happening. And just when it seems like maybe things are about to get better, more bad news comes. Can can you relate at all? I know that there have been seasons in my family's life, and not too long ago, where that's how it kind of felt, where it was like one bad thing after one bad thing after one bad thing with big overarching prayers that were covering all these things, and just when we thought things were getting better, more bad news would come. What do you do when you find yourself in that place? But what do you do when it seems like just like things might finally turn around, you're hit with more news? What do you do when you've been praying and praying and praying, and you, you hope it's about to get better, but it doesn't? What do you do then? That's where Daniel is. And so in that pain and in that hardship and in that sorrow, Daniel did. What did he do? Well, Daniel did what Daniel always did. What, what, what had Daniel always done up until this point? He prayed. And so once again, he cries out to God in prayer. When you're praying and you're praying and you're praying and you don't see answers like you're longing to see what should you do, you should keep on praying. And so for three weeks, Daniel goes into a very intense time of praying. For 21 days. For how long did he pray? For 21 long days, very intense prayer, very intense fasting, very intense seeking and humbling himself before God and saying, God, I don't get it. God, I don't understand. I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been praying. I thought I was going to get better, but it's about to get worse. I don't know what to do, so I'm going to do what I've always done, and I'm going to do it more intensely now than I've ever done before. I've been praying. Now I'm going to up it with some fasting, and I'm going to do it consistently, and I'm just going to seek you above all things. I'm going to put life on hold for 21 days and I'm going to do nothing but seek you until I hear from you. And so he did that. And at the end of those 21 days, Daniel had another vision. And it was of this heavenly being. Now I can see all the little bubbles above your heads. You know, the little thought bubbles. And you're like, who's the heavenly being, pastor? Right? Because some say Jesus, others say an angel, and I say I don't know. Right? I don't know, right? I think it's probably Jesus. That makes the most sense to me. You ask me who was also in the fiery furnace, I think it was probably Jesus there with them in the fiery furnace as well. But, but regardless, what we know is that this is, is the presence of Christ. This is a word from, from God come to him, and, and he prays and he prays and he prays until he hears from heaven. What do you do when you're in the midst of pain and hardship and it's only getting worse, what do you do? You amp up your prayers until you hear from heaven, which is what Daniel did. 
And so in verse 5, here's what Daniel says. He says, I looked up and I saw a man, and he was dressed in linen clothing, and he had a belt of pure gold around his waist, and his body looked like a precious gem, and his face, it, it flashed like lightning, and his eyes, they flamed like torches. Which, by the way, sounds a whole lot like the Apostle John's description of Jesus in Revelation chapter 19. So probably maybe Jesus here, okay? Probably maybe Jesus here. Anyways, Daniel says to him, or says about him, he says that, that his arms and his feet shone like polished bronze, and his voice, it roared like a vast multitude of people. And he says, only I saw this vision. And the men with me, they saw nothing, but they were suddenly terrified, and they ran away to hide. In verse 8, Daniel then says this. He says what, what happened next. He says, he says, in that moment, my strength left me which I think we could understand. I mean, you're just minding your own business. You've been praying. You've been fasting. You've not had any Burger King in 21 days, right? And you're like, you're feeling kind of famished. And then all of a sudden, this is before you. I think you might be able to, you know, relate to that. They felt, you know, a, 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 a little bit like, whoo. He says, my, my strength left me, and my face grew suddenly pale, and I felt very, very weak. And then I heard the man speak, and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted. And he says, I lay there on the ground. So with all that in mind, here are three things I want you to remember that will help you stand firm in the faith whenever it seems that you're praying and praying and praying, but your prayers aren't being answered and you're tempted to give up. When it feels like your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling and not being heard by heaven, Three things I want you to remember that will help you stand firm. The first one is this. I want you to remember this, that no matter how you might feel today, the reality is, the truth is, is that you are very precious to God. Who are you? You are someone who is very precious to God. In verse 10, Daniel says this. He says, just then a hand touched me. And what did that hand do? Just then a hand touched me, and what did it do? It lifted me, right? I want you to know right now that, that, that Jesus is present in this place. And, and friends, I want you to know that he is not here to condemn you today, but rather he is here to touch you and help to lift you where you cannot stand. Some of you are going to sense the hand of Christ lifting you up today. Christ is present right here, right now in this place, and he is not here to condemn you in these moments. He is here to help lift you up. Daniel says that, that he came to me and I was trembling and I was on the ground and I was broken and I was in this place of pain and hardship and not understanding and my, I felt like my prayers weren't being answered and then a vision comes to me and then he comes to me and I fell to the ground and then he lifted me from the ground and he lifted me but I didn't stand all the way up but rather he says I was down on my hands and knees, I was on all fours and I was trembling like a scared dog. That's what he says. I got up to my hands and knees. That was all I could muster. And the man said to me, Daniel, I want you to picture this. Okay, so this is how Daniel is. <laughs> he's down, and he's trembling like this. And he, he kind of looks up, but he's having a hard time looking up. And the man, whom I believe is Jesus, says to him, these words, while he is there in fear and pain and wondering if God cares and if God's ever going to answer and, and what's going to become of him, he says, Daniel, you are what? Precious to God. You are very precious to him. And that word that we translate in English as precious, it is the Hebrew word chamad. And it literally means, it means precious it means valuable, it means greatly beloved, it means highly esteemed. If you've been around for a while, you would know that the, I would tell you that the New Testament equivalent of this is the, the Greek word a poema, right? That you are a beautiful poetic expression of the master creator, that you are a master creation of his. You are highly precious to him. 
And for some of you, this is your moment. This, you're wondering, why am I here today? For some of you, this is your moment. This is why you are here today or why you're watching online today. It may seem like none of your prayers are being heard. It may seem like all of your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. It may seem that, that you are all alone. It may seem that, that, that no one cares and that God is, is not hearing you and that God's not answering you. And it seem, may seem like things are only going to keep getting worse in your life. But I want you to hear this if you hear nothing else. Else, in the midst of your pain and your hardship and your seemingly unanswered prayers, I want you to hear me saying to you today that you, yes, you are highly precious to God. You are extremely valuable to Him. No matter how you might feel, the reality is that you are precious to Him. You are greatly beloved. He loves you and He cares deeply for you, regardless of how you may feel today. You are highly esteemed by God. There's nothing that you can do to make him love you more, and there's nothing you can do to make him love you less. In fact, he loves you so much that though it seems like your prayers aren't being answered and that God doesn't care, he loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for you. He loves you. And sometimes our feelings betray us because we don't see big pictures and sometimes we get lost in our feelings. But the reality is, no matter how you feel and no matter how things look, and even if it seems like things keep getting bleaker and bleaker, the reality is, is that you are highly loved by God. And so soak in that for a few moments. Because some of you this morning need to be reminded that you are highly loved by God. I'm not talking a little bit loved. I'm not talking about he thinks about you every once in a while. I'm talking about you were always, always on his mind. He cares deeply for you, even more than you care for yourself. The presence of Christ comes to the one who is in pain and says, I I know you feel like God doesn't care. And I know you feel like things are only getting worse. I know you feel like your, your prayers aren't being answered, but you... Child of God, you are precious to him. It says this, so listen carefully. Church, listen carefully to what I have to say. Because sometimes we don't listen very well. Now, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about probably the person sitting next to you, right? Right? But sometimes some of us, we don't listen very well. And sometimes because we're not listening, we can't hear God is here. His Son is present here. And He is here to speak to those of us who are really, really wrestling today. And He has a word for us, but many of us, I'm not sure we're listening. Jesus comes to Daniel and says, I know you're crushed. I know you've been praying the same prayer three times a day for 75 years. And it feels like things are only about to get worse and not better. And I know that you're you're crushed and and you're you're under the weight of that. And and I'm afraid you might miss this in the midst of your pain, in the midst of this situation and all that's going on. So, so, So listen up. You are very precious to God. Listen carefully to what I have to say to you. In fact, I want I want you to stand up. Get off of all fours because I know you're trembling and you're having a hard time. I want you to stand up and I want you to look me in my fiery eyes, Daniel. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. So what does Daniel do? What would you do? Run? He says, so I stood up (laughs) trembling. That that probably be me at best, standing up, trembling before Jesus. Three things to remember if you're going to stand firm when it feels like your prayers aren't being answered, if you're wondering if God cares. Number one, remember you are precious to God. Number two is this. Don't miss this. God is doing more than you know. You are highly precious to God, and right now he is doing more than you know. Your your understanding, your vision of the situation and life and and eternity and all that's going on is, is, is that big. We have that much understanding. Remember this, you are precious to God, and right now God is doing more. It may feel like God's doing nothing. It may feel like God's not hearing your prayers. It may seem like, like things are only going to keep getting worse and not better, but God right now is doing more than you know, more than you understand. 
In verse 12, the angelic being, probably Jesus, right, says, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you began praying for understanding. God, I don't understand. God, this doesn't make sense. God, this doesn't seem fair. From the first day that you began praying for understanding and you humbled yourself before God because you recognized, I can't fix this. I can't make this better. I can't rebuild the temple. I can't get us back home. I can't do any of this myself. From the moment that you began praying for understanding... And humbling yourself before God, recognizing he is God and you are not God, your request has been what? Heard in heaven. And I have come in answer to your prayer. Now, I've got to warn you, if you think it's been weird so far, because most sermons with me are kind of weird, if you think it's been weird so far because fiery eyes and booming voices and legs that look like polished bronze and whatnot, if you think it's been weird so far, let me tell you, you've not seen anything yet because we're about to go totally spiritual, supernatural, crazy beyond our understanding in the next few moments. Okay, are you ready? Because in verse 13, Jesus, the angelic being, says this. He says, I've been sent to you to come be an answer to your prayer because you've been praying and seeking, but for 21 days, the spirit prince of the king of Persia blocked my very way, and then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So let's talk about this because this is kind of interesting, all right? And let me first talk to those of you who've been praying for a very, very long time about something, and you wonder if it's worth it to keep on praying because, because you hear the voice in the back of your head saying, you've been praying for this for, for days or weeks, or months, or years, or decades, and it doesn't seem like God's hearing, let alone answering your prayer. So let me me first speak to those of you that find yourself in that place right now, right? Why bother? Why pray? God's not listening. It must not be his will. I've been praying. God's not answered yet, so I might as well stop praying because I, I haven't heard anything yet, so it must not be God's will. Don't miss this, because what I want you to understand is this, is since the very first time that you uttered those words, that you humbled yourself before God, said, God, this is a God-sized situation. I can't fix this. I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. From the very first time that you lifted up that simple prayer to God, he heard your cry. From that very moment that the, the words went out of your mouth and up towards heaven, from that very moment, he heard your cry. From the first time you cried out for healing, God heard that prayer. From the first time you prayed for that wayward child, God heard your prayer. From the first time you prayed for your marriage to be restored and to be made whole, God heard that that prayer. From the first time you prayed, prayed for a breakthrough regarding depression or your finances or that relational mess that you've gotten yourself into, God heard that prayer. For the first time that you cried out for, for God to bring about healing in, in, our, in our nation, in our world, God heard that prayer. From the first time you prayed, our good God, God, who highly esteems you, who sees you as extremely precious, he heard your cry. And here's where it gets weird. Verse 13. But for 21 days, the spirit prince. Let me stop there. For how many days? But for 21 days, 21 days, 21 days. We've heard that somewhere else in this story before. How many days did Daniel pray and fast before he felt released from praying and fasting? He's like, I'm going to seek God until I feel released from praying and fasting. And, and apparently 21 days, that was the mark when he's like, I'm praying and fasting, I'm praying and fasting, I'm praying and fasting. Okay, I've, I've heard from God, I'm released from praying and fasting. I'm going to pray and fast until I hear from God. How long was he praying and fasting? 21 days. Interesting. Coincidence? Probably not. Let me say this. It's a good thing that Daniel didn't stop praying and fasting on day 20. If he wanted to hear from heaven, and he hadn't heard from heaven yet, and even though it didn't seem like heaven was hearing or answering his prayer, it's a really good thing he didn't stop praying and fasting on day 1, or day 2, or day 3, or day 4, or day 5, or day 6, or day 7, or all the way up to to day number 20. It's a good thing he didn't quit praying on day 20. Right? Right? Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Right? I mean, seriously, do our prayers matter? I, I would contend that based upon what I've studied and read and hear, that your prayers kind of matter. Right? Well, I wish your preaching would get better. Well, you should have started praying and fasting for 21 days, right? I'm just saying, 
And some of you have been praying and fasting. That's, this is what you get, right? For 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Not for, for 18 days, not for 19 days, not for 20, but for 21 days, I was trying to come to you with a word from heaven, an answer to your prayer, but there was this, 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 this darkness, there was this evil spiritual being that was blocking my way, and you were praying and fasting for 21 days, and on day 21, Michael came, and, he, and I left him there to do business with him and take care of him, and then I came on in answer to your prayer. Thank you for praying for 21 days, because in answer to your prayer, Michael came, and then I came, and it's a good thing you kept on praying. Now, who is the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia? I don't know. Most scholars believe it's some kind of demonic force. I don't know. I wasn't there. But regardless, the angelic being says, while you were praying and fasting, I was doing battle in the heavenly realms with this evil force. And then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me out. So I said, you deal with this evil force, and I'm going to go and answer Daniel's prayer because Daniel hasn't given up praying. It's a good thing he kept on praying because there's been a spiritual battle raging this whole time, and his prayers were a part of helping to win this battle. And here's what's so powerful to me and what moves me so deeply. I mean, think about this. Daniel prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And what did he see for 20 days? Nothing. His heart is crushed. He doesn't understand. Nothing. But just because he did not see something, that does not mean that God was not doing something. In fact, God was doing spiritual battle in the heavenly realms on his behalf. In fact, that whole time, Daniel's answer was on the way, but there was a spiritual battle raging in the heavenly realms holding up that answer. It's a good thing that Daniel did not give up and quit praying and fasting on day 20 just because he hadn't seen something yet. Hello? Seriously, I know that this is speaking to someone and perhaps a bunch of someone today because you've been praying and praying for a long time for something. You've been crying out to God because you don't have understanding and it seems like you're on day 20 or on, on year 20 and, and you're really, really tempted to quit praying because you have not seen anything yet. But friends, just because you haven't seen something yet, that does not mean that there is not something that God is doing right now on your behalf. Don't stop praying and fasting and seeking God's help on day 20 or on year 20. Keep praying and praying and praying until you hear from heaven. From the first time you cried out to God, he released his word, his presence, the very presence of Christ to come and to minister to you and to your need. And right now, Though you may not see it, though you may not understand it, though you may not realize that right now he is doing spiritual warfare on your behalf in the heavenly realms. And in this battle, this spiritual battle that is raging for this need that is weighing heavily upon your heart, your prayers actually do matter. So pray. And if God so moves, you pray and fast until you hear. Keep praying and praying and praying and believing. It's true you may not see something yet, but you have no idea what battle is going on in heaven, in the heavenly realms. Ultimately, you need to know this. The kingdom of light will overcome the kingdom of darkness, period. It will. So don't you dare stop praying on day 20 or year 20. Keep the faith, keep believing, and keep crying out to God. How do you stand firm in the faith when your prayers are not seemingly being heard? Remember, first of all, you are what? You are very precious to God. And secondly, right now, God is doing way more than you have any idea of. God is doing more than you know right now. Here's the third thing to remember. Remember this. In the midst of, am I going to make it? Am I going to get through this? Is God going to answer? Remember this. Number, number three, God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. In fact, that's exactly what, what Christ said to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, when Paul kept praying about this thorn in his flesh. And you say, Pastor, what was this thorn? I don't know. Could have been a mother-in-law. I don't know, right? It was a thorn in his flesh. And he kept crying out to God over and over again, over and over again, make her nicer. I don't know what the prayer was, right? And he didn't, he did not get in, seemingly, the, the thorn, like, I, I, you know, it, it didn't, things weren't working the way he was wanting. And this was God's answer to him and to those of us 
who are in, in the midst of this, this, this 20 long battle, 20 day long battle, and not day 21 yet, and we're l- wondering, how am I going to make it through? How am I going to make it through? You're precious to God. He's doing way more than you think. And number three, God's power is made perfect in weakness. God said this to Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is made perfect in weakness. Some of you right now, you're at the end of your rope. And let me tell you that when you're at the end of the rope, that's actually when you're the strongest. Because now you're not in your own power, but you're in his power. In fact, get this. Until you accept your weakness, you'll never fully understand God's strength. When you fully recognize, you know what? I, this, is, this is way beyond me. And I know that I'm called to pray and I'm called to fast and I, and I love to fix this myself, but I can't. And so I'm just going to cry out to the one that I know that I, I, I've cried out to and I've been crying out to and I'm just going to keep on crying out to him. It's when you're in that place of recognizing that he is God and, and you are not that you're at your strongest. Until you accept your weakness and who God is, you'll never fully understand his strength. In verse 17, this is what Daniel says to the Lord. He says, how, how, how can someone like me, broken, frail, trembling, doubting, wondering, how can someone like me, a hot mess, a servant, your servant, talk to you, my Lord? My, my strength is, is, is gone, and I can hardly even breathe. And for some of you, that captures exactly where you're at right now. Pastor, my, my strength is gone. I've been praying for this marriage, and I, I, don't, I don't think I can pray anymore. I've, I've been trying to hang on to my kids, and I, I don't think I can hang on anymore. I've been fighting this disease, and it's just like every report is worse than the one before, and I, I just, I don't want to go to the doctors anymore, Pastor. My, my strength, my strength is gone. I can hardly even breathe. Can you relate? If so, then look what happens next in the story. Daniel says that in that moment when he realized that he had zero strength left, he said, then the one who looked like a man, son of man, Christ, he did what? He, what did he do? He touched me again. <laughs> He touched me, and then he touched me again. And then what happened? He said, I felt my strength, what? Returning. And some of you, this this is your moment. This is why you're here today. You may be broken, and you may be crushed, and you may be barely hanging on by a string today. But one touch from the Lord, if you will listen to his voice, which is here present in this place and is speaking to you here in this very moment by the the power and by the, the work of his Holy Spirit, one touch from him, and your faith in this moment can be restored. One touch, that which is broken in your body can be healed. One touch, and you're believing for a God, and that you stop believing believing God uh, and those things that you've been asking you for for years ago, one one touch and that's restored to you. One touch and your strength is returning to you. One touch from the presence of Christ and everything changes. And that is what has happened in my life. There have been times where I've been weak and I've been tribbling and I've been wondering how is this going to work out and how are we going to get through this and how are we going to overcome this and God, where are you? And God, I don't understand. And in those moments, I also fell down upon my knees and I cried out to him and his son came to me in those moments and I couldn't even hardly look up but I couldn't get to my feet and he said to me in those moments, Jason, you are highly precious to me. I'm doing way more than you understand in this situation. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Don't be afraid. Jesus says, you are precious to God. Peace be with you. In fact, Jesus said that a whole lot in the New Testament post-resurrection, the guys who were also trembling and on their knees and wondering, how is this going to work out? Because it seems like things are only getting worse, not better. Peace be with you. Be encouraged. Be strong. Friend, you are not alone. It may be day 20, but day 21 and the answer to your prayer is on its way. 
pastor, does that mean I'm on exactly what I want? No. <laughs> to be clear, God's will and his answer to your prayer may not be the exact thing that you're thinking or wanting. But it will be the exact answer to your prayer that a good, gracious, and loving father who cares more deeply for you than you even, even care about yourself knows that you actually need. And his grace, it is sufficient. So, Pastor, what do I do? Keep praying, keep seeking, keep trusting, and to hear from God these words, you are precious, I'm doing more than you know, and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You will get through, and you will be victorious on the other side of this in me. As we close this morning, I want you to, to just stop and reflect upon this one question. What is one need or one miracle in your life that maybe you've been praying and praying and praying about and you've not seen an answer to, or maybe you've even quit praying about that you need to start praying or keep on praying for today? What's one thing that you need to keep praying for that maybe you've been tempted or even have given up praying for that still weighs heavily upon your heart? Do you know what that thing is? He said, Pastor, I ain't got nothing. Well, come to my office. I'll give you a list. I, I, got, a, I got a whole church family full of those needs. What is that thing? What is that situation? Who, who is that person? that you need to keep praying for. Right now, in these moments, let's take that, that situation, those situations, before our Father who cares deeply for us. Because from the first moment you pray, He hears. You're highly precious to Him. He's doing way more in the situation than you realize. And in your weakness, His strength is made perfect. Please stand. As we go into a time of response this morning, as always, uh, here in the Church of the Nazarene, you are invited Welcome to come and pray at these altars. At any time during the service, you're always welcome to come and pray and seek God, to seek his heart, seek his face, seek his strength for you. If you want to come and pray for yourself, pray for a loved one, pray for a family member, pray for this church, pray for our nation, pray for the world. There's a lot going on in the world right now, wars, rumors of wars. Uh, maybe it seems like things are only getting worse and not better. Maybe that weighs heavily upon your heart. Don't, don't stand there in fear, trembling. Come and receive the touch of the Master and allow your strength to be restored, your faith to be restored, so you can go forth proclaiming good news to a broken world. Father God, we thank you for these moments that we've shared together today in your house. It is a house of prayer. And God, we do confess and ask forgiveness for the times when it's not been a house of prayer and when our homes have not been houses of prayer, when our hearts have not been houses of prayer, when we have quit praying or not prayed nearly as much as we should have. I ask God that we receive your grace and your forgiveness for that, and that today and in the days ahead that, that we would be known as your servant Daniel was as a man and as women of prayer who continuously seek you and especially seek you all the more when things are looking bleaker so that we might receive your touch, your strength, and might receive your answers and your blessings in our lives. It's in Christ our Lord, our Savior who died for us because he loves us so much. And we pray and ask these things in God's people's head. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness, it tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope Jesus Christ my living 
living hope. And we'll invite you to extend your hands and receive this blessing. It says in Hebrews 11:6 that without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek them. So go today with a faith that pleases God and a hope that is in living Christ who is on the throne. You are loved. Go in peace. So this week we've been we've been talking about prayer and the encouragement that God is still at work in us and around us, even if we don't see him. And, you know, I think that's a hard concept to really wrap your head around. The fact that God, God thinks so highly of you, God hears you, and God is always fighting for you and always fighting for your good. A lot of times I think that we look at our prayer requests and if things don't work out the way that we had it worked out in our heads as being the best way of doing things, we don't, we ignore what we see of God working in those situations. And so, or we just don't see him at all. But I love this idea that for 21 days, Daniel was on his knees fasting and praying and on the 22nd day, when the angel was able to come to him and really talk to him, that's when he felt like he could, he could start eating again. And the, and the angel just told him flat out, hey, we are working for you. We are doing what we can to answer your prayers. But there's other things going on around you that you just don't know anything about. And so I want you to take that as an encouragement for today. God is still at work. He's still doing whatever he can for whatever your situation is. And you just have to trust in him. You got to trust that he knows what he's what he's doing and what's what the best outcome is so we're going to close up now uh there will be someone here online for the next few minutes if you want to if you want to talk um just let us know and we'll be we'll be here we'll see you next week